So let me ask you this question today as we get started, all right? Uh, today I want to talk to you about bold prayers. Are we, we, we want to be praying bold prayers as bold prayers. And it's, it's spelled the same both ways, but one is prayers, the other is prayers. How many of you believe in the power of prayer? Amen. Fantastic, I love it. How many of you would say that you believe in the power of prayer, and, and you know that, but you could probably pray more consistently and with more faith? With my hands up? Yes? Okay. Okay. So, if that's so, why is it that we as believers who believe in Jesus Christ and what he's done in our lives know that we have the access to boldly go before the throne of God in our lives in prayer and know that God hears our prayers and is moved by our faith, then yet our prayers and our prayer life can be so inconsistent and lacking in our faith in so many ways. And I'm not looking for you to answer on that one, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking for you to go, ooh, yeah, that's probably true because I would say that's true in my life as well. Why is it, and why do you think that it is that, that my thought is, is for many of us, in many of our lives, when we think about prayer, here's what we think of. We love and we honor God in our lives, but yet we're thinking that maybe we're not real good at praying, right? Some of us are thinking, you know, I'm just not really good at praying. Or, or for others of us, you know, some might be saying, prayers can be so intimidating. Or, or when I get together with people and pray, you know, it's just like, wow, there's some people that, and I, 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 I just don't know what to say. You know, there's, the, there's like that one person that's like a professional prayer, you know what I mean? You ever met that guy? Or that gal, right? They're just like really good at it. You know, they're just like, the, they just, and they, and they wax eloquent in everything they're saying. And you're like, and I got about four words, God, that's all I got for you. Right. You know, you know, and, and, and it's almost sometimes we, uh, some of our minds begin to play games with us and we're thinking like, you know, is it a point system with God that if I can quote a scripture, I get a little few more points on my prayer or, right, right? Or, or maybe it's for the every amen or yes, Lord, we agree with someone in prayer. We get a few extra points, right? Come on now. Or maybe some of us are thinking, wow, well, like, you know, wow, Lord, I, that was a powerful prayer, you know, and, and, and if I was you, I would be thinking to myself as God, whoa, whoa, that was a really powerful prayer, right? And some of us would say that our prayers are maybe boring. Maybe we get into routines. I think that's a very common thing. We, we pray in ruts. We pray certain things that we've only been praying forever. They become predictable. They become mundane. Maybe safe prayers or even repetitive. You know, the repetitive prayers that we tend to do. Some of my prayers get pretty boring as well. You know, I think most of us do, whether it's at dinner and I remember, you know, there were times when we'd go out with people and they'd start praying. I'm like, oh my goodness, really? Come on, shut it down. We're going to eat here. <laughs> Food's going to get cold. You know, and, and I got into my rut of praying over different things. You know, there's sometimes I don't even like listening to me. So I can't imagine why God would even like listening to me, right? Am I speaking as myself or is anybody else hearing anything and feeling that like, like I do, right? We're called to be bold prayer excuse me, called to be bold prayers with bold prayers. Do you understand that? And, and I want to show you a little bit about that because we have the opportunity to be that in our lives. So much of what we pray is safe. You know, a lot of, a lot of times we pray for things in our lives to be safe. Look, God, protect us. Uh, Lord, keep us as we're traveling. Be with us. Lord, you know, bless us. We do a lot of those kind of prayers, right? A lot of safe prayers uh, for safety for us, or they're just real, uh, you know, kind of things that just are putting a cushion around us. But we need to pray prayers that can be earth-shaking prayers, life-changing prayers, and, and powerful, bold-filled prayers that can do and move amazing things in our lives. Because following Jesus is never safe, isn't it? Following Jesus is never safe safe. This week, this week, we begin a week of prayer. If you happen to look on the top of your bulletin, you would have seen that it said there, a week of prayer. This week, we're inviting you to participate with us in a week of prayer, whether you're at home or whether you're here with us today. 
And, and it begins this evening at 5.30 right here. We're going to be back here together, gathering together for a, a, an hour of directed prayer. Some of you are like, an hour? An hour of prayer? I pray for everything I know of, and I've got about three and a half minutes, and then I'm done. Right? How in the world could I ever pray for more than five minutes? I mean, I've hit all the missionaries. I hit my family. I, you know, I just hit it all, and I'm out of time. I'm out of, out of stuff. Tonight, I would like to help you. I would like to invite you to come be a part of this directed prayer where we give you something to focus on to pray for throughout this hour so that we keep you focused and moving through things, knowing how to pray. So it not only will be a time of prayer, it's also a time for you to learn how to pray. So we encourage you to come back out and join us at 530 right here in the sanctuary. On your way out today, you're going to receive a prayer guide. This is a prayer guide we made up for you. This prayer guide gives you uh, the next seven days of prayers to begin to pray. Inside of this guide is is a devotional and a moment for every single day. Um, And so what it has is a devotional to kind of focus you for a moment. And then down at the bottom are three prayers for you to pray, to begin to spur you to pray for a little bit in the morning or evening or whenever it is that you uh, take a time in the day and pray. Uh, One of them is going to be a prayer about you in person, your personal prayer. Another one's going to be praying for our world and our missionaries. And another one is going to be praying for our community, the communities you live in. And each day there's three prayer focuses. I'm not asking you to spend an hour in prayer at home. I'm just asking you to take just a little time as we covenant together to pray this week for ourselves, for our communities, for our world, focus together. Would you be willing to do that with me this week? I pray you will. On your way out, like I said, you'll get one of these. And uh, we, have, we have enough for you to have them. On the front, there is a, a schedule for you that tells you what's available for praying. Like this evening, uh, you know, we're going to be in the sanctuary uh, at 530. We're going to be gathering together. We're also going to be gathering together this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock right here for prayer as well. Those are the two evening gatherings we're doing to pray together. And it, again, will be a directed prayer. Um, then this, uh, each day we encourage you to pray at home as you walk through this guide in your personal time. And the last, for those of you who, who need a place to come and pray, the sanctuary will be open Monday through Friday from 9 until noon for you. The lights will be set. There will be an atmosphere of quiet music and just a place for you to be able to come in and have time with God if that's more conducive for you. However you do it, wherever you do it, we just want you to join us so that we collectively come together as a body of Christ and pray for our year 2022 and our church. Amen? Be sure you pick one of those up on your way out. And so now I'm, I'm talking to you about prayer. Join us tonight at 5.30 as we pray. But right now I want you to understand, I want to begin preaching in Acts chapter 4. If you've got your Bibles, turn there today. Acts chapter 4 this morning. As, we're, as you're turning there, I just want to set a little context of Acts chapter 4 and what's happening in that scripture, all right? In Acts chapter 4, the context is that Peter and John are preaching to the people, to the masses of people that are there. They're preaching Jesus, a Jesus Christ who, who was died on a cross, but he was risen from the dead, And uh, the the community is not real happy about it because there was a man who was able to walk and and now, excuse me, he was unable to walk and now, and for 40 years, and now they've also begun to pray for people. And this man was healed of his, his infirmity that he had had for 40 years. And there's a problem. They've been preaching and now they're healing people. And the Sanhedrins are having a problem with this. Because they cannot deny that somebody who they've known to be crippled all of his life is suddenly up and moving around. Here's a problem. And so the priests and the Sadducees and the the, the captain temple guards, they're really kind of furious because this is causing a stir in the Jewish community. The, The thought that Peter and John are leading some type of cult that's going on here, and and they're a little bit worried about this. So what do they do? They decide to arrest Peter and John and throw them in jail. And the next day, Peter and John uh, are brought before uh, these leaders uh, in a trial situation before the Sanhedrin and, and the different leaders of the time, and they sat them down in this circle inquisition and began to ask them some questions. 
And as they ask questions, what they began to say was, by what authority and in whose name are you doing these miracles like this man over here that was healed? And you're preaching this message, whose name and in whose name are you doing this and whose authority, who gives you the right to do this? Because they had all spiritual authority. So the context is, is this has really been stirred up and there's a problem here. And here's what we find in Acts chapter four in verse 10. If you've turned there, read along with me. It says this, Peter responds to this question with some really, really crazy boldness in what he says. He says, let me clearly state to all of you and to all of the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. The man whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. Now, this is pretty bold. You have to understand that. Can you say bold? Bold. Thank you. See, that's in your face bold, and here's why. Basically, he's saying, look, 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 look. You ask me who I'm doing this in the name of. I'm doing this in the name of Jesus Christ, whom you killed, and whom God, Jehovah, raised from the dead. One of the reasons this was so bold before these leaders is the fact that the Sadducees didn't believe in any bodily form of resurrection whatsoever. So when Peter said that God, Jehovah, whom they all served, raised Christ from the dead, he essentially has declared war on what these Sadducees are believing. You did this. God raised him, and I'm declaring war on you in the religious spiritual structures that you've created here. And so he's declaring with them that there's a problem with where we're at, and I want you to see this problem. And so he continues on. And, and because of his boldness, here's what we find in verse 13. You ready for this? So here's what they did. The members of the council were amazed, it says. They were astonished. They were blown away. By what, uh, by what they saw when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no spe- special training in the scriptures. So when we take that scripture and we look at it and we see what's being said there, they were amazed and shocked because of, by the boldness because these were ordinary men. They were uneducated men is what they were thinking. And I find a little bit of funny in this scripture because when you look at the Greek word for ordinary, if you took that Greek word and you looked at it, translated out, it actually, the word is idiotes. Idiotes. And it can carry the meaning unschooled, of no special value, but it also carries the meaning idiot. So basically, the Sanhedrins were amazed, shocked, astonished that these ordinary idiots were so bold in their faith for Christ and were willing to speak to these highly respected, hugely scholared and knowledgeable, powerful men, the Sanhedrins, with no fear of what would happen to them, knowing that they were speaking against the very things they stood for. So they're facing a dilemma. The Sanhedrins here were facing a bit of a dilemma. This guy who was crippled over here for 40 years, they know him by name. They know who he was. He's standing there, and he's not crippled any longer. It's obviously a miracle, right? There's no question about it. And they have a fear that Peter and John's movement here is going to take over and upset everything that they have been doing for centuries now. They need to stop these guys. They need to put a stop to what's happening. So here's what they decided they would do. They, they decided that they would threaten them to keep them quiet, right? They say, basically, they're saying, don't preach Jesus, stop doing miracles, uh, or I'm going to have you arrested, we'll have you beaten, and most likely we'll have you put to death. So you either stop, or this is what you're facing right here. So what do we find that Peter and John did facing these instructions? They prayed. They prayed. 
And they didn't pray, oh God, keep us safe, Lord. We don't want to die. I can't believe this is coming at us. God, oh Lord, don't let them arrest us again. Please protect us. Give us a comfy, safe moment here, a trouble-free life. All I want is a good job, God. Just give me a good job where I'm not going to be worried. And with a good 401k and maybe some health benefits would be nice, God. Let me be happily married with two and a half kids and, and, and you know, go to my small group so that I can grow in my knowledge of Christ. But Lord, be safe in what I'm doing. Lord, help me just to get my praise on on Sunday, but, but make sure that it doesn't affect my Mondays, God. You know, I, I want to be, be comfortable. Don't, don't let me, anything bad come upon me. They didn't pray like that, did they? You assume they don't? We're going to find out they don't. They prayed under the death threats that they were given. They prayed an incredibly bold prayer. Because following Jesus was never meant to be a life of timidity, was it? I'm going to try that one again. Following Jesus was never meant to be a life of being timid, was it? I want to show you something today. I want to show you the prayer they prayed. And and this needs to be our bold prayer as well. That we maybe will be praying this week as we begin to take on prayer in our lives. Maybe some of us for the very first time that we begin to step out in prayer, begin to step out and trust God with things in our lives rather than just over our meal times. As you know, you never know what might begin to happen when you incorporate prayer into your life. And when you begin to incorporate bold prayers into your life, there's changes that God will begin to do and how it can change your life for years to come. Here's the bold prayer that they prayed. It's down in verse 29. So if you were there, I think you were at 13, skip down to verse 29, and let's see what they prayed, okay? Here's what it was. They said, and now, O Lord, you hear their threats, right? You know what they plan to do, that they're going to beat us and they're probably going to kill us, God. You know their threats. You understand what they're saying to us. So Lord, give us your servants your great boldness in preaching your word. Give us your servants, Lord, that we may be continue to preach your word with boldness. Make me bold, God. Give me an unshakable, unspiritual conviction in my life that can only walk through you and you alone, God. Having a spiritual urgency to share what you have shared with me, to obey no matter what the cost, God, even if it may cost me greatly, make me bold, God, is what they've been praying. All the religious leaders were amazed by their boldness, weren't they? It says they were amazed by their boldness. So maybe a question to ask yourself would be this. How amazed are people by My boldness. I'm not asking you for an answer. I'm asking you to answer yourself. How amazed are people by your boldness? On a scale of 1 to 10, maybe within your own mind, where would you put yourself? Some of us would graciously say we're maybe a 6 or 7, right? But actually, we may be a 9 or 10. Everybody knows us. They know us in our faith journey and and they see the spiritual fruit that comes out of our walking with God, out of our time in prayer, out of what we're doing and discipling people around us. Sometimes you say it, sometimes you don't say it, but regardless, your very presence alone is obvious for everyone to see that you are a follower of Christ and you stepping into the room, there is a difference that begins to happen because you're a committed disciple, a follower of Jesus. Now there's those folks But then there's others, if we're honest, that may say, "Mm, I'm a believer, you know, and I I don't talk too much about God. I maybe would put myself at maybe a two or three on the scale of one to ten. You know, my coworker might say something like, I didn't even know you were a Christian. You know, Uh, uh, you attend LFA, 11 and First Assembly. I didn't know you attended there. I've been there before. I've never seen you. Right. I had no idea you were a follower of Christ. And we may fall ourselves into that category where there's no real fruit, there's no real evidence of Christ in our faith journeys. There's no power in our walk through what Christ wants to do in us. So the question you have to ask yourself is how amazed are people by your boldness? Let's look back at Acts 4 again. Okay? And we're going to read verse 29 and following. It says this, And now, O Lord, 
hear their threats and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch your hand, stretch out your hand with healing power, with miraculous signs and wonders. Let them be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after this prayer, someone say, after this prayer, and after this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they preached the word of God with boldness. After this prayer, make us bold. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they preached the word boldly. That's amazing. After prayer, the prayer that says, make me bold, filled with the Spirit, preach boldly. Some of you say, you know what? I'm just really not a very bold person. It's just not me. I'm sorry. It's not me. I'm kind of quiet. In the biblical context, boldness really is not a personality trait. You understand that, right? It's not a personality trait. In fact, we find normally a timid, introverted type of person, a hesitant one, uh, can be bold in the Spirit of God like nobody's business when the Spirit of God begins to move on them and calls them to be bold and they're obedient and listening to what the God is telling them to do. Often an outspoken person, a confident person, an extrovert, if you will, will shrink back when spiritual opposition begins to come against them as God is trying to get them to step out. They didn't go out and try to be bold the Spirit of God caused them to be bold. He brought boldness out of them. You know, it's not like, uh, for those of you who understand this, it's not like they went to the gym, put on their favorite pump-up music, and, and started pumping themselves up to, to be able to lift the big weights and do all that, right? And they're, you know, and the music's going, and they're, they're getting themselves pumped up, right? Is that the kind of boldness that God is talking about here? No. No, no, it's, it's not that you pump yourself up. It's not you doing something for God. It's not working up your boldness. I want to get that very clear. It says they prayed, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and he emboldened them, right? That's what the Scripture says. The Holy Spirit works in us in so many different ways, doesn't he? He works in us in our lives, in our everyday walking around lives in so many different ways. And, and you know, the Holy Spirit can convict us in something that we may be doing that we need to stop doing. He can confront us when we're facing something that we uh, are trying to avoid. Um, he may guide us when we're looking for direction in our lives and where to go, what to do, where to move, how God to, to allow us to do something. Um, he, he works gifts out in us, doesn't he? Both uh, fruit of the Spirit gifts as well as spiritual gifts, right? Those are in our lives as well. He draws us to himself, doesn't he? And he empowers us when we're open to hear from him on it. Make me bold. Say that with me. Make me bold. We want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit through preaching and the power of what he does and the spiritual gifts and what he can do in our lives. There are different ways that we can be bold. You know, and it doesn't have to do necessarily with, with just all gifts and things. We can be bold in the way we dress, in the fact that we may dress modestly in a world that could care less about modesty, right? We can, we, can be, we can be bold in our witness by not gossiping when everybody else is gossiping and calling them out on it, can't we? When you hear someone talking about someone and you, you are in that conversation, rather than just going, <laughs> why not step into it and go, you know what, this is wrong, and be bold in that. We could be bold that way, couldn't we? We can be bold in reading our Bible, whether it be at work or at school or somewhere else where we happen to pull that Bible out and begin to read the words and see what God speaks to our lives. We can be bold like that, can't we? We can be bold in, in even listening to our Christian music, you know, and when we pull up to the light and we're bumping it and that, the car's rocking, right? Right? And we got the Christian tunes going. We can be bold like that, can't we? We can be bold by walking out of a movie that you know would offend the, the, the Spirit of Christ because you see something that isn't right and you shouldn't be there and getting up with your family and leaving because you know that's not where you should be. That could be boldness, can't it? You can be praying for a coworker in a, in a situation when you, you know that it's, it's not what your company would allow you to, but your coworker wants you to. You can be bold that way, can't you? 
You can be bold uh, by inviting someone to church, can't you? You can bring someone to church instead of just inviting them. It's easy to invite them. How about bringing them? You know, that, that those doors uh, are the scariest places for people who don't know Christ to walk through. You realize that, right? Who knows what goes on in that place right there? You know, will I be dressed right? Will, will, yeah, I've heard stories. I've heard, they, hang, they swing from chandeliers in those churches. We don't have any chandeliers, but you know, right? There's stories. It's scary if you've never walked in the doors of a church. And you're thinking, has anybody never walked? There are people who've never stepped inside the doors of a church, both young people and older people and everything in between. We can be bold in our giving. There's so many ways that we can step out in boldness for Christ as he enables us, as he challenges us to do so. What if every one of us took a moment each day before work or before we left for school or before stepping out the door and we prayed this simple prayer? God, today make me bold. I don't know how. I don't know how you're going to do it in me, but make me bold today in some way that I might affect someone else's life. Empower me to be bold in whatever I say or whatever way you desire for me to do it. What would happen in our lives if each day we stopped for the moment and we just asked God to do that in us? Imagine what could change with the people around your life if you began to pray that. Imagine the effect that it could have in our community if we each began to ask God to use us, to be bold through us each and every day. So back to Peter and John, sorry. Back to Peter and John, and they're facing persecution here, right? They're facing persecution from the Sanhedrin who are looking to imprison them, and yet what did they do? They kept preaching, didn't they? They kept praying for people, looking for miracles, and they kept uh, leading people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to become Christ followers and the time. And the high priests and the religious leaders, and they were furious with what they were doing. They were just beside themselves. And, and they're thinking to themselves, we need to stop this that's going on here. And, and if we don't handle this, what's going to happen is Rome is going to come down here and handle this. And we do not want Rome involved in this. So we need to get this stopped. So we find in verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 18, where we pick up the story. And here's what it says. They arrested the apostles and put them in a public jail. But an angel of the Lord came at night, and he opened the gates of the jail and brought them out. And he told them this. And he loved this. I love this part right here. I'm just going to pause and say that. I love this because he didn't say, okay, okay, get out of here, guys. Quick, run, hide. They're coming for you. Here's what he said. Go to the temple and give the people this message of life. Go to the temple and give the people this message of life. He didn't say go hide. He didn't say run for your lives. He says go back where they arrested you and keep on preaching the message that you've been preaching because that's what they need to hear. I'm setting you free. And if you're declaring enough, or excuse me, if you're daring enough in your life to pray the prayer, God, make me bold, I want to show you that there are three things, three attributes of boldness in these verses, the next three verses I'm going to share with you, there's three attributes that I'm going to see that you'll begin to see happen in your life. And and, uh, you're going to to love this, all right? So if you're taking notes down, write this down. Three attributes of boldness. Because here's, they're they're described right here in Acts. You're going to see them, okay? Three attributes. Acts chapter 5, verse 18. Going back for this, uh, where we started just a second ago. Number one is this. It's not fun. This one here is not fun, but it's almost always true. Here it is. Boldness almost always triggers spiritual opposition. Yay! Man, I can't wait. That's so exciting. I bet it's going to be great, right? We all love opposition, don't we? No, we do not. Boldness almost always triggers spiritual opposition. Peter and John continue to preach boldly. Jesus and his resurrection... And from the dead, and they were, in verse 18 says, they arrested the apostles and put them in a public jail. They continued to do it, and they got arrested. Second time in prison this week, all right? Second time. Ooh, that's a record for us as believers, right? Second time. Thrown in jail in a week. And we often say things like, you know, I'm serving God, and nothing seems to be going right in my life. 
How, how, how could this ever be? Where's God in all of this? Serving Christ is not a formula for everything going great in your life, is it? I, I want all the old saints who've been serving God for a while. Serving God is not a formula for having everything go great in your life, is it? It doesn't work that way, does it? It definitely does not. And quite honestly, you know what? I don't worry a whole lot when there's opposition in my obedience. You realize that? Here's where I worry. I worry when there isn't any opposition. That one scares me a lot. Because when there isn't any opposition, it means that I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat to the enemy who doesn't want me to be bold. If I'm not being opposed, if I'm being opposed, then I know, I know somebody's worried about me and somebody's going to try and stop me. As sure as the rain falls in Oregon, let me tell you this. If you pray, God, make me bold, the Holy Spirit will rise up within you and you will find yourself standing for God in ways you never dreamed that you would ever, ever stand for God before. And it will not always go well for you. I can promise you that. Swear on a Bible if I swore on Bibles, which I don't, unless I'm testifying. Then I do. Right? You know what? People are probably going to laugh at you. People are probably going to criticize you for your bold stand. People probably will talk bad about you, right? They may even make fun of you for whatever you're doing. But let me just tell you, when you live for Jesus, you might be home alone on a Saturday night because your friends might not want to hang out with you because you've taken a bold stand, right? When you witness for Jesus at school, you're probably not going to be sitting at the popular kids' table. Just going to throw that one out there, right? Okay. If you stand your ground in your faith, maybe at work, you might just get passed over for a promotion in your job. There is spiritual opposition, and it will come at you. And anybody who's, who's had or experienced that can say a real big hearty amen. amen. A few weeks back, I did in our, my Fear Not series, right, during Christmas time. I talked about uh, the opposition that Joseph was thinking he may have to face. And the angel came and told him to fear not what others may think about you. Don't worry about what others perceive you to be. If you're, here's, here's a statement right here. If you're not ready, is what I told you, if you're not ready to face opposition in, your, in obedience, you're not ready to be used by God yet. And I told you that last, uh, in December, I told you that statement right there. If you're not ready yet, to face opposition for your obedience, then you're really not ready to be used by God. And we have to become ready. It's a part of it. It's a part of it. It's a dangerous prayer when you begin to pray, God, make me bold. You know, it's kind of like saying, God, give me patience. Do you like praying that prayer? No, but you're like, don't, don't pray that prayer. What are you doing? You're crazy. As soon as you pray that prayer, God will start making you be patient, give you opportunities, and then you'll not be liking it, right? Don't pray, you know, God, make me bold. No, you want to pray that. But see, boldness almost always triggers spiritual opposition. Second thing I want to share with you today is this. Second attribute of boldness. Boldness often releases God's miracles in our lives, doesn't it? Boldness often releases God's miracles. When you live with a bold faith, you often see God's hand at work in your life in and around you over and over. Check out verse 19 of Acts 5. And, and let's see this in action. This is Luke writing in this. Uh, and, and, and when he writes this scripture, it's just interesting because it seems so matter of fact. You know, it just seems like, you know, we heard this and the dog went out and this happened right? Check this out. It says in verse 19, but an angel of the Lord came at night, opened the gates of the jail, and brought them out. He didn't sound shocked, right? There's like, there's no, oh my goodness, can you believe this? The angel came and he shook the doors. There's no powerful statement here. There's no emphasis put on this and, and, and none of that. And, and, and he just, he just kind of says it like it happened. If an angel shows up in my life, maybe he's standing behind me or something, you know, please snap a few photos, post it to social media, you know, hashtag angel arrives or something like that. Just put something out there because I'm going to be shocked. And I, I, I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it, right? But here Paul is, I mean, excuse me, here Luke is writing this and he's, he's not 
shocked by what's happening. It didn't make a big deal of the angel. He wasn't surprised by the fact that the angel arrived and did this. In other words, here's what it says. When you walk in obedience to God, you won't be surprised by the miracles of God. That'd be a great place for an amen right there. When you walk in obedience to God, you won't be surprised by the miracles of God. It's just the way it is in your life. You almost come to expect God. No God will come through every single time. He just shows up. He's always faithful, no matter where you're walking in your life, when you're being obedient to him. When you start praying, God, make me bold, then suddenly you're bold. You'll see the power of God made real in your life in so many ways that you never thought God would become real in your life. You're going to pray out loud for the first time, maybe some of you. Oh my goodness. And and you don't even know how to pray, you're thinking to yourself. And where did those words come from? You're going to be shocked, right? Suddenly you're praying with faith and passion, and you're not even sure how those words came out of you. It's It's like the prayer was coming from somewhere else. And it was. It was from the Holy Spirit, wasn't it? Or maybe you'll begin sharing with someone who's really going through a hard time. And as you begin to share, the words of encouragement begin, begin to come out of you. And, and, and you never even knew that you could speak those words because you never really thought about it. But the presence of God and the Holy Spirit speaks through you into somebody else's life when you pray the prayer, God, make me bold. Or maybe you'll begin to share a scripture and you're like shocked. You're like, where did that come from? I, I don't even remember knowing that scripture, but somewhere along the line, you remembered that you had learned that in Sunday school or some other moment in your life, and God brought it back to you to share at the right moment. You won't be surprised by the miracles of God when you're walking in obedience to God in your life, will you? I'm going to try that one again. You won't be surprised by the miracles of God in your life when you're walking in obedience to God, will you? In bold obedience, you'll often see God's miracles of faithfulness coming to you. He will do that in your life. And the third thing today is this. Boldness always requires faith. I'm going to say that one again. Boldness always requires faith. And that's a difficult thing for some of us. If you pray, make me bold, this week you'll have to live out your faith in a way that you haven't in a long time or for some of us ever have lived. When you pray that prayer, God's going to challenge you and move you into a place that you've never been before. See, the angel opens the doors of the prison and he says this to the guys, go to the temple and give the people this message of life. So at daybreak, the apostles entered the temple, as they were told, and immediately began teaching. What did the angel say? He said, go do what you just were arrested two times this last week for doing. I know you're probably going to get beaten. I know you'll probably be killed. But you know what? That's okay. I need you to go, and I want you to do it anyway. The angel said, go and tell the people this message of life. It's going to take some faith. It's going to be bold, and and you're going to see faith arise within you in a way that you never thought you would be able to do before. You know, and and many of us, if we talk and we had stories, there are many of us who would have a story that might sound similar to this one. Um, At my last church, we hosted, uh, every year we would host a a, a conference, a spiritual renewal conference, and... uh, at the altar time, I went forward and I, I began to pray over this, this gentleman. His name was Ron. And I, I, I didn't know Ron well. You know, there were many people we didn't even know at this conference, but I knew him, but I didn't really know him. And as I began to pray for Ron at this altar call, just something began to come over me. And I began to pray, and my prayer got very real. And I'm like, oh, where's this coming from? Because I'm praying things that I didn't know anything about in Ron, and I'm thinking, I'm hoping I'm not offending him here. But the Spirit of God began to speak to me about what I pray. My prayer got very personal uh, in his life. It began to talk about his addictions that I didn't know he had, his strongholds that he was giving himself into, and the bondages that he was willing to allow himself to, to put himself into. And I'm praying over him, and I'm just shocked at what I'm saying, not knowing Ron but yet I'm obedient to what God was telling me to do. Little did I know what that prayer would do in Ron's life because later Ron came back to me down the road and said, how did you know? 
I said, no what? How did you know to begin to pray for? And he listed off all the things I prayed for in his life. He goes, how did you know? And he began to tell me of his addictions. He began to tell me of the strongholds that he'd given himself over to. He began to tell me of the things that he had submitted himself to that were ungodly in his life. He said, how did you know? And this this prayer that I prayed over him through the Spirit of God in me began to set into motion a transformation in Ron's life that continues to this day. And it's not because of me. It's because I was willing to be bold for God and he spoke through me through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So you have no idea in your life of what God will set into motion through one single act of obedience in your life. You have no idea what that one word might mean to someone. What that one moment, that one invitation, that one thing, and how it may change their life as you are bold for Christ and step out. See, when you pray bold prayers, you stand up in the name of Christ. You lean towards someone in their pain. And and as the Holy Spirit begins to prompt you, you show a generous love, expressions. You begin to pray in a way that you might not have previously felt comfortable in your life, either praying or speaking or whatever to someone And it's amazing how God will do and use you when you pray, God, make me bold. So what happened to Peter and John? What happened to them is they continued to live out their life and live boldly. So here's here's what happened. They began to live happily ever after, didn't they? They settled down. Oh, yeah, yeah. John, John got married and he honeymooned in the Caribbean, right? Two kids. He started a business, sold the business later on for quite a hefty profit, did nicely on it. He created a second business, we call it a startup today, and continued on into retirement, right? And then Peter, of course, Peter being the brash one, was he started a fishing consulting business because he knew to tell everybody what to do, right? Got married, honeymooned in the Bahamas, uh, made lots of money, and he retired out early and had a vacation home up in the mountains of the Golan Heights there in Israel. And everybody lived happily ever after, didn't they? No. Let me tell you what really happened, okay? Contemporary historians tell us that John was arrested later on again in his life for preaching what he was preaching. He was dipped into boiling oil. They hung him by his hands, lowered him down into a pot of boiling oil. The goal was to kill him, and it didn't kill him. And so since it didn't kill him, then what they did was they went ahead and they um, exiled him to an island so he couldn't preach to anyone anymore where all he could do was write letters and things to people. And that is what happened with John. Peter, first century sources tell us that he was martyred and killed in Rome. And they were going to kill him on a cross, as was the traditional fashion. But he didn't feel worthy to be killed the same way his savior was killed so they actually put him on the cross by his request and put his cross upside down because he was unworthy to be killed the same way his lord was killed see boldness always comes with opposition and this is one of those really feel good messages isn't it i just can't wait i'm going to be dipped in boiling oil this is exciting it doesn't doesn't go that way does it if you're facing opposition then maybe you're doing some things right You shouldn't really worry if you're facing opposition. But if you're not, then maybe it's time for some change. What Jesus has done for me in my life, I just can't help but keep it to myself. Whether it's here, it's out in our community, it's at different places where I'm at. I have the boldness to believe God answers prayers and I'm not afraid to pray. I have the boldness to love enough to invite someone to church not knowing whether or not they'll like my invitation. Doesn't matter. I'm willing to share my faith in many and creative ways. Doesn't just take one way. There's many ways. Each of us are unique in the way God created us. But when we pray bold prayers, we will begin to step outside of our comfort zones. I want you to understand that when we are willing to invite him into our story, 
we will begin to transform and put into other people's stories. We've got to move beyond our comfort zones because you'll never fulfill your calling sitting inside your comfort zone. You realize that? You'll never fulfill your calling sitting in comfort. It just doesn't happen that way. And you have absolutely no idea of what God may set into motion through your one single act of boldness. And it all begins with a prayer, make me bold. Father, today, today I lift to you our family here. Whether they're here or at home, I lift today our family, God, that we would begin to desire to have you make us bold. Lord, that we would no longer be comfortable sitting in these comfort zones of where we are feeling safe and secure, but God, that we would step out in response to your leading in our lives and trust you. As your heads are bowed today and your eyes are closed, I'm just going to ask the question, can I be praying for you today? Is God pressing on you to pray a prayer that says, God, make me bold? Is God saying something to you that you have lived somewhere in comfort zones that you need to step outside of, that maybe it's time for you to begin to move into a position where you've never moved before, where God wants you to step into areas that you have failed to step into out of fear, out of any of the other reasons that I've listed. And today, you're going to make that step to be bold. Who in this place would say, Pastor Kevin, can you pray for me today as I look to make a difference and become a prayer warrior that says, make me bold. Would you just lift a hand and say, yeah, pastor, would you pray for me that today? I need to begin to adjust myself. I see those hands. Is there more that will hold them up for just a few minutes today? Is there others that would say, yes, that's me. I need to be bold today, pastor. Anyone else that would hold those hands up for a moment today? Indeed, across this place, Lord Jesus, today you see each and every hand that was raised, God, where you have begun stirring their hearts. Lord, I pray that in that stirring moment that, God, you would begin to do something in them that even tonight or tomorrow, God, they would pray the prayer that says, God, make me bold for you, God. I know the cost. I know what I may face. Make me bold, God that I would move from my comfort zone to where you would want me to be today. God, I just pray that you would begin to work in their lives to begin to step out and trust you. Because really that's what it's about, is to trust you. So God, today I pray that you would encourage them, that you would cause them to step forward, cause them to lean into those around them who need a bold person in their lives, someone who's trusting in God in great ways. God, give them those steps each and every day as they pray, Lord, make me bold. So God, touch them, I pray, Lord, today. Let it start here in 2022. God, let it start today. Let it start now in their lives, Lord God. Not tomorrow, not next month, not next year, but today. God, let it begin today as they've made that moment and said, yes, that's me. Maybe you're in the house today. I'm going to stop right there, Lord. Maybe you're in the house today and you would say, you know what? I, I don't know how to be bold for Christ. I don't even know Christ in my life. I've never trusted in him as my savior. Or maybe you'd say, you know what? I've trusted him years ago, but I have walked away from God so far away from God. I don't even, I don't even know that I know God anymore. And I need to reconnect my life with Jesus Christ as my savior. Maybe you've never done that. Maybe you've done it years ago, and today's your day for reconnection. Maybe you're sitting in this house today. Maybe you're sitting at home today. It doesn't matter where you are. It matters what your heart is saying to you. And if you're in this place today, and you're saying that, and you know it's your moment to say, you know what, I need to reconnect with God, or I need to give my life to Christ for the first time today. In this house, would you just lift a hand up so that I know who we're praying with today? Would you slip a hand up and say, yeah, that's me, Pastor. Can you pray with me? Thank you. I see that hand. I see that hand. Is there another that in this place today that would say, yes, that's me today. That's me today. Anyone else? Maybe you're sitting at home and you're looking at the TV screen. I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. Is this your moment 
for you to recommit your life to Christ, for you to give your life to Christ for the first time. Today may be your day in what God has for you. We're going to pray in just a moment today, and I'm going to invite everybody in the house to stand with us. Will everybody stand together today with me here? I'll give you a second. Some of you got it stretch out all of those things. I'm going to invite you to stand with me. We're going to pray with those who just raised their hand and said, yes, I need to reconnect with God or I need to give my life to Christ for a first time. Why? Because I don't want anybody to ever have to pray alone in this house. I believe they deserve and need the support of a family. Amen. So today we're going to pray this simple prayer. And if you raised your hand, I want you to know this. It's not the words that make this happen. I am trying to put words to what your heart is already asking God to do. So just as we repeat these today, I just encourage you, say this prayer from your heart with us today. Everybody together say, Dear Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I have been walking away from you for long enough, and I bring myself back to you. I want to trust you as my Savior, and I want to confess my sin to you and believe on you as my Lord and Savior. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Help me to walk out my life with you each and every day. Help me to pray, Lord, make me bold in my daily walk with you. Give me strength in the hard times and faith to walk through them all. Surround me with brothers and sisters in Christ who love me and who are willing to help me in my faith journey. Touch me today, I pray, God, as I give myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give the Lord praise today. I just want to encourage you, if you prayed that prayer today, whether you're home or in the house, take a moment. You may have received a Connect card, get Connected card on your way in. If not, at Information Central, they're there as well. I would just ask you, please, take a moment, fill it out with some information. Why, you say? Because I want to follow up with you. I know that walking a faith journey alone is not easy, and I want to be there to be able to walk with you, connect you with other believers who can help you grow in your faith journey, and walk the hard parts out together. So if you would do that today, you can get it to me. You can leave it at Information Central. I'd be happy to connect with you this week and help you begin to walk out that faith journey with Christ. Amen? As you get ready to go today, please be sure to stop by on your way out. Pick up a prayer guide so that this week you can join us together in prayer in your homes. Also, please, if you would, come back and join us tonight at 530 as we pray together for an hour. And you're like, that's just crazy. I can't do that. Come. I bet you you'd be surprised. You can do that. Trust me. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. If you need prayer for anything, the altars are open. A board member and his wife will be here to pray with you today. If you need prayer for anything, come down. Let us pray with you today. God bless you. The altars are open. Have a great day today.